Uh, and we're going to last week. It was it was crazy, shocking. Uh, we we talked, of course, with Steve Delson, who's an author who wrote the uh, autobiography, co-wrote the autobiography of former Raiders defensive lineman John Matuzak, of course, who who died of a drug overdose thirty years ago tomorrow. Um, his mother Audrey called the show. She was listening and shared some really poignant memories of her son. Um, and uh, was thankful that we were touching on a lot of the positives that he had done because, uh, you know, the life, uh, the, the world is full of negatives and um, of people attacking others, and, and we like to bring the stories uh, that, that, that represent the entire person as well. And it's, it's one of those things I think underscores the point that unless you've walked in someone's shoes, you really don't know the path they're on. Uh, and today um, we welcome former Raiders first-round draft pick, Selected 24th overall by Al Davis in the 1991 draft. Of course, someone himself who's been walking a path not many of us could understand, nor could he until recently. And that is Todd Marinovich. Todd, thanks for being with us here today on Silver and Black today. Right on. It's great to be here, Scott. All right, man. Well, uh, we certainly appreciate you taking the time. And, you know, I have to tell you, we before we you know dive into some of these subjects about you and your life, which I know... Um, uh, you, you, you're probably asked about a lot. We've had a lot of fans, a lot of Raider fans message us over the course of the last year to talk about you and say, Hey, what's going on with Todd? And I think that's a testament to people wanting to see you live a good, happy, fulfilled life. Um, and, and Raider nation, I know, you know, you, you had that brief time there, uh, and we'll talk about that later. But you know, Raider Nation, a good or bad, they roll with you, and um, they might be the worst critics sometimes, but they also have lots of love for you. So I was I was struck by that, and I'm I'm glad you're able to um, spend some time with us. Now they really want to know that journey, and we're going to d- dive into it, of course. But how you doing at present time, um, and 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 everything that's going on in your life? Uh, how you feel about about everything? Well, I loved your uh, transition from a Tuzak and. and- into my segment and uh i couldn't agree more um i think uh and then when you say the raider nation it it comes from the top and it's uh mark davis carrying on the tradition that al started and at last year he looked at me and said todd once a raider always a raider yeah that's just not a slogan uh, they live it. Yeah. They do. They do but, it. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I c- kind of j- really, I went to my first uh, Raider reunion last year because, um, and it, if it wasn't for my roommate and uh, best friend with the Raiders at the time, Andrew Glover, encouraging me to go, um, I was listening to my head that, that nobody would want to see me uh you know, they roll their eyes, all, all, the, all this fantasy, really <laughs> that, that fantasy. And it was one of the most incredible weekends of my life. Um, and now I'm, I'm part of it. I'll go every year. And guess what? It's moving to Vegas. I know. It's crazy. And, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. You know, we, we, we are... Um, we have been, the the Raiders are so active in this community already, um, Todd and, and, you know, Vegas, Vegas has all the vice, right? Everybody knows about that, but the community outside of that side of the city is pretty significant. It's grown. It's now almost two and a half million people here. And the Raiders already have 35 people. They're a year away from moving here. They have 35 people in their foundation. They're doing community work all the time. So we see a lot of those guys like you, who played for the Ra- and some of them some of them played in training camp and and didn't make the team you know and they're back right. and they're accepted by Mark Davis and the organization once a Raider always a Raider uh, and and they really are appreciative and it was great to see I know you were out there last year like signing autographs and all that kind of stuff how was that reception from Raider fans when you went out there for the first time were you nervous about that at all um yeah uh, a little bit I, I was mo- I was more I was really uh, concerned with how team, you know, t- some teammates and past guys I didn't play with that were really legends. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was it was great. It was like, uh, and that's the thing that's amazing when you do 
get together um, with guys that that you played with. It, it's like no time had ever passed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I know I, hearing hearing guys um, like Howie Long and Marcus Allen, they have a big charity softball event here this coming uh, this coming week, or they had one this week, and and able to talk to Marcus and and ask about, and he he still talks glowingly about you, um, especially from a talent perspective and what you what you were able to show. Uh, and I think that you know, the, the, everyone has kind of seen what happened over the course of your career and of course your life, because you were under a microscope and, and sitting down and rereading that Michael Rosenberg piece, of course, from sports illustrated. Um, and if our listeners haven't read it, you should do that. You know, I found myself again, same age. I grew up in Southern California. So, so the, the, the persona and the legend that was Todd Marinovich, even at an early age, when I was in high school at the same time, you know, reached all the way down to San Diego, as you know, um, and as the story moved along, you know, I, w- I think I think I have the same point of view as these Raider fans have, which is, you know, I want you to do well. I want you to get to a good place, face those issues that, you know, that 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 got you to the point where you were with addiction and all those other things. And in that story, um, you know, you Michael leads with this whole thing about the big lie. Right. And the big lie had to yes. do with you and your dad, Marvin, and his desire to mold you into this great athlete. Tell us what that lie was and how you finally came to grips with admitting to that and getting at least getting to the point where you could start working, getting past it. Wow. It was, uh, well, first off, Michael, uh, Rosenberg who wrote it, I think did a fantastic job. Um, it's not easy to put all that together Mm -hmm. and, and it was, um, Just really something that uh, has come up um, as of late uh, in, in my recovery process, right? And kind of wish <laughs> it got to it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is what it is, and um, I just, uh, you know, as a as a young child, um, you know, we put our trust. And our our parents, and I just bought I bought in, and I was all in uh, to my dad's ideas, and not that I agreed <laughs> agreed with them. Mm-hmm. I just uh, like like Michael wrote, I bought into the lie, and it it. it uh, it became my journey. Sure. And wouldn't change it. And, you know, and, and the thing is, it sounds cliche, wouldn't change a thing, but uh, it, it's, it's made, you know, it's made me who I am. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing too, reading through it, um, Todd, it's, uh, you know, you relate, we all have different issues, different problems, different severity of issues and so on. But, you know, speaking myself, right. Uh, well, I had my issues growing up too, and and although they may be different than yours, you know, I could relate to 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 what you were talking about there because I think we all go through life trying to figure out who it is we are, what it is we want to be, um, and and how that happens. And of course, your parents are that example, that first example, and you don't know too what training they had. You don't get training. I mean, you're a parent now too. You know this. No one yeah. gives you training. It's not like they say, okay, here's the playbook, right? Like you did when you were yeah. playing football. There's no playbook on how to raise a kid. So if, yeah. if, if you and your dad, if, you, if your dad didn't have a, a great um, upbringing or if he had different issues, now I don't know much about your grandfather, but, but the point is you don't know where, what his background was and you don't know it's what. So you, yes, it's generational. And yes. This stuff is just being passed, passed, passed we could go on and so on and so on. So the thing I do know is he did the best he could. Yes. With the, with the information he had and wasn't, um, (laughs) which can be hard to swallow. Mm -hmm. Wasn't trying to hurt me in his mind, you know, in in his mind. No. And it's, so, you know, I think we're, we're all, um, sick to a degree mm-hmm. um we're all not in recovery obviously um but it's forced me to look at 
dark areas that are painful um, to get to experience the after. Yes. And um, that is is something that is um, hard to describe, that feeling. Yeah, and we, and we want to talk to you about that. We're going to um, step aside real quick here, Todd. When we come back, we'll continue uh, our conversation with Todd Marinovich on uh, where he's at, where he's been, and what he's learned, most importantly. You're listening to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. This is Silver and Black today, live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Welcome back to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140 with our special guest, Todd Marinovich, former first-round draft pick of the uh, Los Angeles Raiders in 1991 and, of course, uh, star at USC. Uh, and uh, for folks like me who grew up in Southern California, someone you grew up hearing about constantly and, and knew who he was. Uh, and, and Todd, we, before we went to the break, we're talking about um, – you know, your recovery and getting to where you're at. Uh, and one of the things, too, that, that, that really hit home for me in reading um, Rosenberg's story from SI back in January was going back to those early years as a kid. You know, I have, I have four boys and a daughter. Um, they're always looking for my approval, affection, and attention. And for you, um, like you said, your, your dad did the best he could. It wasn't like he was trying to do anything to hurt you or anything like that. But the way that you were able to get that, you know, affection and love and attention from your dad was through this joint effort at the time, right, through sports. Why do you think it took so long for you to kind of realize how that had happened and how you'd been traumatized and, and how that led you to some of those very dark places that you've been throughout your life? Yeah, it, it, and you're dead on. It is uh, 100%. Um childhood trauma and I don't think uh, you can survive childhood any of us without experiencing some kind of trauma mm-hmm. um, and and if it's like I experienced the physical um, emotional and verbal abuse it uh, it stays with you and, and I, I didn't under, I didn't understand that and there wasn't really a link of uh, childhood trauma to addiction until kind of as of the last few years they're, mm-hmm. they're finding out. And, and, and it, obviously, hindsight, sure, it makes, <laughs> it makes sense, but that wasn't what the, we were talking about um, early on in my early recovery attempts. So... Um, and then it's where, you know, you're at as a person and I've kind of thought a lot about, was this brought to my attention, um, years ago and I just wasn't ready to hear it, no. you know, and that, that's a possibility. So, uh, it's, a, it's, it's the journey and, uh, it's, I'm still, I'm still in it and and will always be in it and it's, and it's uh, something that I've you know, accepted. Yeah, and 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 that I I I'm with you at that same same juncture, which is all of life, your experiences, the pain, the suffering, all that stuff is part of who you are and builds you to a point, and 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 you have to work through it. To your point about trauma, everybody has trauma in their life, different different ways, different people that 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 heap it upon them. Uh, but clearly, that's that's something. And, and one, I don't know if you've if you've read or heard about um, John Eldridge. He wrote a book called Wild at Heart. And in Wild at Heart, he, he called this thing that you experience. And and I'll be frank, me too, with with my own father in different ways. Is he calls it the father wound? And he says this father wound is something we like all have. yeah, we all have it, yeah. and it's passed yeah. on, like you said, generationally. Um, yeah. And and you know, how your father raises you, they do the best that they can. That doesn't mean they're self-aware. It doesn't mean they have the emotional intelligence to, to do that. And so we have to learn generation by generation to get over yeah. that so that we don't pass it on to our kids or it gets yeah. better and better, right? Yes, without a doubt. You know, and I feel it with my own boy. 
Mm-hmm. And it's uh, Baron turned ten uh, yesterday. Nice. And, yeah, what a big deal! It's 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 uh, it's the coolest thing going for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Without a doubt. And I uh, I get to um, pass on through action, and I keep having to remind myself it's not the things that I say. He's watching what I do, mm-hmm. and. Um, it's the most challenging thing I've ever done, and I love it. Yeah, and 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 talking about you know you 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 finally um, preparation for the interview. I went back and rewatched the the 2005 documentary you did the the Marinovich Project with with ESPN, um, and and seeing what you were saying then versus what you had said in the article this year. Uh, and, and you've kind of, you're now at a place where you use the word abuse, right? With, with your dad, mentally, physically, um, was it fear all those years that prevented you from coming to grips with that? (laughs) You said it, Scott, the big, the big one Mm -hmm. and, uh, and didn't even realize that I was, uh, motivated by that. And uh, it ruled my life. Yeah, fear. I was just I was scared. Still am. Uh, not as you know. I, I'm I'm a work in progress. Um, but uh, yeah, it's in it's it, it's in it's in the it's in the DNA almost. It's in, <laughs> ingrained. Yeah, yeah that's that's why. Well, and and Todd, we you know we the thing about fear, right? Is we all have fears and. Um, you know, you hope that it's not of your dad, right? Or that situation. In your case, it was, and, and you're working through that, which is which is very encouraging. And but we all have it, right? And and I think the, yeah. more, the when you when you recognize it and you then approach dealing with it is when you start to heal. Uh, and it sounds like you know you're starting to get there, which is which is fantastic. And for me, one of my opinions is as a dad in today's culture. Uh, and this is where I talk about where where you know you growing up under that that microscope. Um, I don't think we let kids be kids. We want to shuttle them from practice to practice, activity to activity. Never let them find ways to entertain themselves. You know, you were on that program, uh, which of course, I mean, there was more articles written about your diet than I think your play at one time. Um, God, I know. <laughs> Terrible. And this frivolous and it was a lie. Yeah, it was a lie because you're. Yeah, I, I read that too. Your grandparents were giving you McDonald's and Oreos yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but that's a kid. You know, you 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 have to, as a father, you know, you prepare them for a, to 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 eventually be adults. But what 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 you need to do is you need to learn on your own. You learn through mistakes. You learn through imagination. You learn through playing um, around and just kind of being a kid. Um, should people look at your story as a way to learn? how not to do it or or is there is there a mixed lesson is there some things they should look at that that you and your dad were part of that were good that they should look at versus the things that are not hmm. i would never say what they should take from it that's they're going to take what they're going to take right sure um yep. and there's and there's and there's a lot there so um i i uh you know, I, it, it's it's not easy as a parent, and, uh, and I'm getting how cool is it? I get to um, experience this end of it. Of yes, of course, I want to protect them, and uh, the thing is, I think I know what's best because I've lived it. Right. But I don't know if that holds true. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, I I protect them if I see it you know, an easy one wandering out into the street, but I am not, I'm trying to really expose them to as much cool stuff as I know and, yeah. and let them, you know, decide. And, um, it's, uh, and in sports are a part of, I believe in them. I, I really do. I think mm-hmm. they're amazing. They can be amazing. Have we gotten off, uh, the path a little bit without a doubt, um, but it's the best thing going, I think, in our culture for kids because I've I've experienced it, and um, maybe I'm just not informed. Maybe there's more, but that's the route that they've. They're athletic, so they like to play. Most kids aren't, you know, like 
do the running, jumping, and and then when it becomes a team, that's why I really wanted a team sports. Are there's a magical quality when you all come together. It's great. So it is, and it it, it teaches kids, I think, uh, important skills about coping, getting along, working together, and that stuff you use not only in sports, but you work you use when you go to work. Uh, you use Correct. you use in your family, and so so. To me, I agree with you. I think I think we've gotten off track. I think that this focus on kids playing one sport all year round. I played everything. I wasn't good in it. Yeah, anything, but we played everything, right? I mean, that was the point. Yeah, you're robbing them of an, a, a, a different experience in a in a way. Yeah. Um, now, if if the kid comes up with it himself, I'm just playing one and yeah. because that's what I want to do. I get it. Yeah. But, yeah. If they love a game so much that they want to focus on one, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. We'll talk, we're going we're gonna to take another break. When we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about football and, and, and your career and growing up playing the sport and how some people feel like maybe you didn't love it, but you did uh, because of the involvement of your dad. So we'll, we'll dive into that here in just a second. Uh, we're talking to Todd Marinovich here on the Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio. 1140, don't go anywhere. There's more coming up. Hey, this is Tim Brown, Hall of Famer. You're listening to Silver and Black Today. Welcome back to Silver and Black Today here on Father's Day on CBS Sports Radio 1140. And Tim Brown brings us back in, and we're talking to Todd Marinovich. Todd, you threw a couple touchdown passes. Awesome. Yeah, you just made me smile with that intro. Love, (laughs) Love, Timmy. What a player. Yes. What Best a, receiver, yeah. And, and a good One guy, too. Like I said, we, we've been around him that's, at cha- charity yeah. events. <laughs> but that's the thing, really. Uh, my experience is with great, I mean, great, great players. They were as equally as great off the field. Yeah. Which is amazing, but that's what I've experienced yeah. with all those guys. Oh, no doubt. And you, and you played with some great ones. Now, we're talking football a little bit. Um, I think most of our listeners and Raiders fans know about your football career from the early age, of course, because it was well documented in every magazine, every newspaper through USC and then into the NFL. I mean, clearly we know and, and you know, you, you put in all that hard work, but you also have God given ability. H- how much, you know, how much did you I know you talk a lot about um, that you wanted to be. You wanted to play. You're a competitive guy. Um, yes. And a lot of people mistake the stuff with your dad as you being forced to play, but you loved the game, didn't you? Yeah, without a doubt. I think it's the greatest game on the, on the planet. <laughs> but um, the time that I spent, that's the thing. I, it, it, it taught me that there, there are no real shortcuts, and this is what – my dad just laid out that if you want to be uh, – really successful this is what successful people do and he related it to either gymnasts or swimmers um like olympic caliber ones they're doing it all day long right and and i believed it and so the three four five hours that i would put in i was getting a break yeah. so it's perception mm-hmm. and that yeah and it's it's uh again so well documented uh all the work that you put in uh, and then the, the, the fruits of that labor, right, which was uh, your performances in high school, first at Modern Day and then Capistrano Valley, uh, and then on to USC, where, of course, your, your dad was also a star. Um, when, when, you, when you got to USC uh, and, and you, you were playing football, and, and the one thing that I did not know about you until recently was the, the, the artistic side, right, and that you got there and you were you were, were were having some trouble adjusting at USC, and then you 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 majored in art. Um, that USC experience, and of course, um, with Larry Smith and all that stuff that's well documented. Um, that was you were under so much pressure as a young kid, walking in there and start. I think you're the first starter uh, mm-hmm. at USC uh, as a freshman since like 1941 or something like that. Um, that pressure, I mean. How how much pressure was it for you, and and how did it lead to to you really not having a great relationship with the coach? And he did some, you know, I know Allie, who's uh, your girlfriend, your 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 the mother of your kids, uh, his daughter. You, you're obviously uh, had a great relationship with her, but with Larry, you had a very mixed relationship. 
what was was that pressure on you on him that created that um and how how is that where really the seeds of addiction and all that stuff started in earnest as far as actually using it's a, it's a big question, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We we could break it down a little by little. You can answer a part of it. You don't have to answer all of it. I just started to, yeah. I riffed. I riffed, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, let's see. Well. The pressure at USC. Talk about that. Yeah, that, that when I, I just went back we, uh, a few years back, but they were honoring a couple teams of, of the past. And so you get to see the current players without all the armor, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was, the, what was hand down for me, it was shocking how young they were. Yeah. And I just it put in perspective, like, man, I was them. What I'm looking at, they're just, they're kids. They really are. They're young. They're young people mm-hmm. and really young to be in what everybody looks it is uh it 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 was staggering um and it is it is, it is what it is yeah. um whether it's right wrong or you know that doesn't matter it just uh blew me away because i uh i thought differently and I, like I, I could handle uh everything that goes with being a, a you know quarterback at a major university it's it's insane yeah uh, is what it is so it's a lot of to, pressure it's a lot of pressure and and Todd I mean I you you were in the media all the time now imagine I mean I look at kids today my daughter just graduated um, college so so my oldest just graduated college which makes me feel really really old Wow um, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh man the, the hairlines going back everything uh, but but when I when I look at those kids today Todd if you were growing up today even like you had been grown up and nothing changed, imagine YouTube, uh, Facebook, all this stuff. The kids have even more pressure, don't they? I mean, with all social media and all this digital stuff, they're constantly tracked from the moment they're 10, 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. No, no. And uh, it just adds to, you know, the pressure of it all. So, um but still, the experience it, 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 it is is where it's at. Uh, you know how they handle it is another thing. But then they'll get an experience without a doubt. Oh yeah, I encourage and I encourage that. Yeah, experience that. Yeah, no, it's. I think it's important. And and again, we we all go through what we need to go through. We make mistakes. We have triumphs, and and that's all part of who we are. Now you go yeah. from USC, and of course, uh, right before you leave. Uh, you had the legal trouble with the arrest, with cocaine possession, all that stuff. And so you slip in the, in the first round because of those issues and the persona that was out there about that you were, that you were uh, a troubled guy. Uh, but Al Davis doesn't care if you're a troubled guy. If you can play, uh, if you have the ability yeah. to, to play the game and help his team win, he was willing to give guys a chance. So they take you 24th in that first round. Talk about being drafted by the Raiders – uh, which basically your hometown by the Raiders and what it was like for you in dealing with Al Davis. Yeah. You know, looking at it, it probably wasn't the best situation. Cause <laughs> I, I didn't leave the, the Coliseum. Yeah. You know, I was right there. But my, uh, my friends and teammates were you know, right across town. I was in Manhattan beach and, uh, so I, but it, I would have imploded if I was in New York or <laughs> anywhere. So that setting was not really the issue. Um, but it was where it was where I wanted to play. I told I really I told my uh, agent at the time because it was really early in the morning, um, the draft, and I just said, "Wake me up when the Raiders are on the clock." And he did, and the <laughs> phone rang. Uh, it was. Uh, I was just ecstatic. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, obviously things started well there, and when you when you came in for Jay Schrader and and played, and and that first game you had was was phenomenal. Um, playing for the Raiders and out, so Al Davis was surveilling you, 
during your time because of your off the field issues. Um, did how was that? Was the relationship with him then strained because he was always watching you, or did you just get along with him and you just kind of you were doing what you were doing, and so it was just part of the deal? Um, our relationship was not. Uh, it was. It was un- well. He said it to me. It's unlike anyone I've had mm. uh, with a player, especially one this young. Only was it in two when he sat me down, and it it was really out of his hands, uh, as how he put it, because it was I was violating the NFL drug policy. It wasn't Raider policy I was violating, right? right. Um, and he. he you know, I was his boy. He he went out and picked me when nobody would. So um, it was. Uh, I carried that around for for two decades yeah. of that. Like I let him down, and I needed to amend that. And that's when I got to sit down with uh, Mark Davis. Well, that's... And he gave me the once a raider, always a raider. And so. Um, it's all about relationships I'm finding and in this recovery uh, lifestyle, it's really in life. It's about relationships. And I just really didn't, I'm learning how I I just don't know really how. Yeah. Um, And it's a learning gig and it's awesome. It's not always easy, (laughs) But it's it, what I'm finding. It's worth those un, it, the uncomfortability of it all yeah. to get to the other side to to, to feel the, the benefits. Like you know, it, it relates to, to me. Work spending all those hours with my dad. Obviously, if I'm spending all those hours and, and I'm not seeing any benefit, that's enough. I'm out. Yeah, it's, it's hard to stay motivated when you when you don't see a benefit, right? Which is why so many right. people try to lose weight and then they fail because. If it doesn't happen fast enough, if you don't see the result, then you kind of give up yeah. on that. And, and I mean, and I agree, you, you have to, nothing great comes from uh, ease. Nothing great no comes. Pain. Yeah, because I want to do stuff where there's no pain. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to like doing that stuff. Yeah, no. And that's what happens. And, but the, the, emotion, the emotional stuff. Oh, that's where I I want to avoid. Sure, um, but it's uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, yes. that to- totally get that. Um, Todd, we're gonna we're gonna take one more break. Want to keep you for one more segment. When we come back, I want to talk about the now. I want to talk about your art, and I want to talk about the future. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're talking to Todd Marinovich, former Raider, former USC Trojan, quarterback. You're listening to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. All right, we're back talking to Todd Marinovich, former first-round draft pick of the Raiders, and uh, we've we've gone through a lot of stuff uh, on Todd, his his life, his background, his career, and now we want to focus a little bit on now, what he's doing now, and uh, I want you all to go to MarinovichArt.com, MarinovichArt.com where you can see some of Todd's work, his, his painting, uh, and all this stuff, which is phenomenal, man. And, and, and I think for you, um, the painting, it sounds like from, from reading, and I want to ask you, um, getting, getting back to something that you really love, which is art. You studied it in college. Now you're doing it professionally for a while. Uh, how much is that helping with your recovery? Well, it's always been helping. I just wasn't aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the damn truth. I um, I knew it really early, like my earliest uh, of school, that um, it's the only part that time was non-existent other than recess. Yeah. So I knew that being active playing, I love to do, and I don't think about anything else but that with sports and art and uh so i knew i i knew it it just became not the focus really quick it wasn't like it was not allowed it just that's not 
what we were focusing on. And it wasn't until uh, I just sparingly, you know, did it uh, over the years. And it wasn't until my son, uh, Baron, was born that I just said, I'm all in. I'm going to either do it and it's going to work out or not. (laughs) And it's the fear. There you go. Yeah. And I just let's say let's do it and it's been amazing really well and it's i mean it, i get to paint, paint pictures it's, you, a, it's it's awesome well and it's it's i mean it's it's great stuff too i mean i was you know it's not you're a talented guy and i find that i don't care if you're physically talented whatever it is that usually talented people have multiple talents right so you had sports of course and you're able to paint i know your dad was a, a sculptor he could have been a, a very uh-huh. good sculptor as you've said um, yeah. and so to see that work and to see the reflection of your love of the game to a football, um, you, uh, even, even basketball, I know you have a, a cool portrait up on your website of, of magic Johnson, uh, and all of that, it, it really is, uh, amazing stuff. And, and I hope that you continue to really to focus on it because, um, you know, you, you have the ability to do something that, that a lot of folks, either have and can't reach or don't have. So um, it's, it's good to see that you're able to, to tap into that and that it's helping you as well along this journey. Yeah. I love win wins <laughs> and art, art, art is that for me. For well, sure. and, and, and in the few minutes we have left with you, Todd, I know this last question before we, we let you go is, is sort of a tough one, but with all this stuff we talk about and you're very, like you said, in preparation for this interview and talking to you, you said, Hey, I'm an open book. You know, nothing's off the table. I'm good with anything. Um, in the end on your own time, <clears throat> one of the things I think that's important for any of us to get past wounds, to get past issues and trauma is eventually getting to the point where you can forgive. Um, is that, is that a journey you're still on, you know, with your dad? Again, it, he, he did his best, Right but you still have yes. to get to a point where you forgive him for not knowing these things weren't the best for you. Uh, and, and are you there yet? Are you getting closer? How do you feel about that? Oh, I, I'm there in that regard. I, it, if it's just not one thing and then you're to the other side, I think, it, I think it, it's ongoing and forgiveness is like you said, a huge one. There's a lot of also uh, where it's about me, uh, not about him. Mm-hmm. There's grief, um, grieving, uh, not being able to have a childhood. That, um, but then you get into comparing of what is normal. What is the what? What is the normal <laughs> childhood? Yeah, uh, I don't. I no don't such know. thing. <laughs> Uh, it's different for but, everybody, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's expl- it's really exploring, and, and that's and sometimes it's exploring in art and in and in my uh, in my life and in in my past experiences is scary. But what I find, the, the more I do it, um, the better I feel, and it's not always easy. Um, and, uh, the great part about it, I, I really, I, I, I'm reflecting on things of my youth and, and then I have uh, two beautiful children that are, I get to see how practicing what I would want it done to me with yeah. them and see how that works. And then it's, it's really about practice. I'm practicing. That's right, man. And, that's, that's how we learn. Yeah. That's how yeah. we learn. Well, I, I can tell you, Todd, we're, we're all keeping positive thoughts for you here, and I know fans are as well. The journey you know, to enlightenment, a happy, healthy life, is, is as we've talked about, it's sometimes a lonely one. Um, and there are some things we got to get to on our own, but I, I know Raider Nation is behind you. Uh, they're wanting you to succeed in life, in your art, and, and, and in feeling good about your life and, and where you're going and, and raising that family. And you always have a spot here. We hope we can catch up with you again soon to check in on your progress and more importantly, to see how your art's going. Uh, and we'll make sure we link up uh, marinovichart.com to our website. But, man, I, I just want to thank you. It's been, it's been great talking to you. And, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep in touch. And, and, and I appreciate it. How, how about I come in 
yes. when uh, the Raiders are in their new home. A- absolutely. You know, a little in studio, that would be bitching. Yes, and hopefully we'll be out there at the at the stadium too. And and that's the thing too. I know uh, you'll be part of that, and we're just about a year away from it, man. And they're they're building their headquarters here, which is actually not far from my house. So we'll uh, wow. we'll do that. But yeah, we'll get. We'll get you out here, and I just want to thank you again and wish you the best, man, and, and we're here if you need anything. I, You know what? Side note, I just did a a, a, a big painting for Mr. Davis. Oh, did you? Of the new, of the new stadium. Oh, that's so killer. I've been, yeah, I've been checking progress. It's an amazing, amazing building. Shit. Yeah, it's going to be cool. I can't wait to see your art. Todd Marinovich, thank you for joining us today, my man. Right on. Thanks for having me, Scott. All right, Todd. We'll talk to you soon.